I got this device off of eBay the other day. This is a power splitter. As you can see here, it's got one input here on the left hand side and four outputs here with SMA connectors on the outer edge of the die cast box here. Now this has, well, it's got power splitter here written, but it's got 380 megahertz to 2500 megahertz. And I got this idea off of another ham on Twitter. He actually posted up saying how he had used this as a splitter for GPS, so GPS receivers. So I've got a couple of GPS receivers. I've got one here. This is a BG7 TBL GPS unit. Uh, I've done a video on this. It's actually a very good unit. You get 10 megahertz out, one pulse per second out. You also get all of the GPS data out of the serial port here. It's got an inbuilt um, 10 megahertz reference as well, so that even if you lose GPS lock, you've still got a 10 megahertz out um, GPS signal. And I use this mainly for my transverters, GPS locking them so that they're frequency stable. I also use these for um, my repeaters, which requires the GPS data out of here. So what happens is, is if I have quite a few of these GPSs, that's one. I've got another one here from QRP Labs. This is a QLG2 GPS receiver. These are only about $20. Uh, the problem is, is, though, is if you have this receiver and then you have this receiver, you've got multiple antennas. So here's a little small magnetic patch antenna, but I, I've done quite a few projects here at home and it gets a little bit much because you've got all of these antennas hanging in the window. This antenna only comes with a short cable as well. It's only like two meters long and that only just reaches here into the window in the shack. So I want an antenna, one antenna outside and I want to be able to feed in multiple uh, or feed that multiple receivers, GPS receivers off the one antenna. Now, normally you'd be able to just use this, this power splitter, but there is a problem that presents itself. And that is that these GPS receivers, they, not just this one, but most GPS receivers, they power a preamp in uh, the antenna that's outside. So it's also known as an active antenna. So what happens is you get voltage coming out of this antenna port and uh, to power that preamp because of the loss at, what is it, GPS frequencies, 1.5 gigahertz or something can get quite high. So what they do is they put a little preamp here in the antenna so that it can boost the signal that's going down the coax back into the GPS receiver in here. Now that's bad if we connect multiple GPSs to these outputs, they're gonna be feeding voltages on every single output uh, back in. So we don't want that. All we want is we just want one output to one GPS receiver. We want the DC to come through that and out to the antenna and we want the rest to be blocked. So what we're gonna do is just a quick and simple mod with this and we're going to put some DC blocking capacitors on these three other outputs and just have one that passes the DC. Now, uh, as again, I, I got this idea from uh, Mark, VK5QI. He posted about it on Twitter and he just basically said that you just need a couple of surface mount capacitors, which I've got, and you just cut the tracks and solder them in place. There we go. We've got some uh, tra uh, some traces there, PCB printed traces. So we've got now four outputs there, and they go through here. I'm gathering that this is just for, for matching and splitting, power dividing, um, back into this common port. So. What we want to do is we just want one of these to pass the DC, which it will if we just cut the track here somewhere and we put in our capacitors. So I've got a couple of surface mount caps, which look a little bit like this. I'm going to have to find the right value. That one's 100 picofarad. That might be a good value to use. And uh, they're a little 0805 capacitors. They're quite small. So I'm going to have to go and cut these tracks and insert them in there. Now, one thing that this does do is there is a little bit of insertion loss, apparently. apparently uh, Mark measured it. He said that his was about 7 dB. I don't have the test equipment set up to be able to measure at 1.5 gigahertz what the uh, insertion loss is. But what we're going to do is just plug it in and um, hook up the GPS uh, data out of here and just see what the differences are between the antenna plug directly into the GPS and then via this just to see 
what kind of locks that we get. It's a, a decent outdoor antenna. Um, I use the little white domed colored antennas. Um, also, I can't remember if I mentioned, but I got this off eBay as well. So there is a link in the description if you want to get one of these. They're only like 50 Australian dollars, 45 Australian dollars, I think. So what I've done there is on this second output, you can just see there that I've cut the track. So what I did was you have to kind of be a little bit careful. I just used a sharp Stanley knife and I tried to cut as close as I could to the, um, pin, the center pin connector there. You can't desolder these pins because the track runs underneath the pin. So it's not like you can desolder it and just insert the cap here because the track runs all the way to the edge of the PCB. So you do have to cut back here as close as you can. So that's what I've done there um, now and just taken out a little slot out of that portion of the board. Now, make sure you do a DC test. So here's a good one. And you can see there that we don't have continuity anymore. So what I'm gonna do is take these little 0805s and this is gonna require some tweezer work, I reckon. Place that cap on that side, solder one side that's to just hold it in there, maybe the side that's got the pin. Yeah, it doesn't need to be pretty because it just needs to make sure that you don't short out on the other side. So just heat that up a little bit, just so that it makes contact there. There we go. I've soldered that other side of the... Surface mount soldering is always fun, isn't it? There's no continuity because we're still going through that cap, but we'll be able to couple the uh, GPS signal, the RF signal through. Okay, so I've put those caps all in there. Now, it's not the most neatest job in the world, but you can see I've got one cap there, another cap there, third cap there, and then I've just got the DC pass-through port here, which is on port one. So uh, according to Mark and his Twitter post, he did have some uh, ways to measure this, and he said that it was about seven dBs of insertion loss. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, also about 20 dB port to port isolation. So basically I'm just gonna plug this in now and just see if it actually works. So here it is with the antenna plugged in, which is just outside one of those little magnetic puck antennas. I've got the DC pass output. So the antenna is currently being powered from this GPS receiver, a QRP Labs QLG2. So that's hooked up to my little GPS, uh, to my voting board here, the GPS receiver. And you can see there that it's got a lock light, so that's good to go. So that's working. That is then also hooked up on output four. I've got the BG7 TBL GPS receiver, and that has a lock, as you can see. And I've got the RS232 output coming out into my PC, and I'm currently reading on their eight track satellites and 10 in view with pretty good signal strengths, and I've only just turn this on, it's only been on for a couple of minutes or so. Um, that's that's working as I expected. So I'm gonna test all of the other outputs just to make sure that I've got similar readings. But um, yeah, not too bad for just 50 bucks or something and a couple of little capacitors. So um, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, if you wanna learn more about this GPS receiver, the QRG, uh, QRP Labs QRG2 or the BG7TBL, then I've done videos on both of these and they will appear on the video right now. So go over and check those out.